it's another day on the property and uh, let's catch you up uh, what has happened in the last week. It's been a surprisingly busy week. Uh, we've been back out of the property a couple of times. Uh, this week we've been meeting some of the people that are going to be pretty integral to what we're trying to do here. Yeah, the very first person we met uh, was an uh, architect and actually it's a team of husband-wife team of uh, architects and uh, it was really fun. Um, we showed them the property and um, the first thing that um, they will need to do is to create a site plan um, to kind of to make sure that we know where exactly to put the house so that we know where to uh, clear the land. Yeah, it was really cool. We'd, we'd uh, what, interviewed, I guess, like a half dozen different architects. We'd spoken to them on a video call before, really explained to them uh, what we were trying to achieve. And we got like a really good vibe from them. They were really passionate about the project, but it was really cool to be out here on the land with them, yeah. uh, show them around, show them some of the things we had discovered, some of our ideas, but also just hearing from them what they think about it and, and get their ideas on it. So that was really exciting, I think. That's... This is, they're the people that are going to be most integral to turning our dreams into reality uh, and helping us to understand what we want to build. Yeah. And then on the same day, we also met a contractor that uh, will do our driveway. Um, so the reason we can't do a driveway ourselves is that it's uh, probably going to be at around 1,000 foot length and it's uh, on a slope. So um, we really want to make sure that it's made correctly and yeah. right so that we don't need to redo it again later. Yeah, and, and you saw in the previous video we were clearing the existing logging trail. That was not to make this the driveway. Uh, that was just so we can get the truck actually onto the property and up to near the house site. Uh, otherwise, we were just parking on the road and, and walking up. Uh, so some parts of the logging trail will, will be reused for the driveway. Uh, obviously need to be cleared wider yeah. and actually like excavated out and a proper road base put down. But some of it we can't because some of them are too steep. So we need to make kind of extra loop uh, so that yeah. it's less steep. But also there is a section of bedrock and uh, the contractor was saying that, you know, maybe there's a way to go around that. Also, we need to account for, um, we want to make sure we can uh, get our RV on this driveway, but also potentially our friends' RVs that you know, some of those RVs yep. are 40 foot long motorhomes. Uh, we want to make sure we can have those friends visit us as well. And again, we spoke with multiple local contractors. Uh, we uh, ended up going with this particular person uh, or his company because, uh, I don't know, we just got a really good vibe from him. They were the same company that helped us with the soil tests. Their quote was very competitive, but also they have a local gravel pit and yeah. we need to bring in a lot of materials for this driveway. And knowing that those materials are going to be sourced locally and haven't got to come too far is going to be not just a big cost saving, but also just environmentally means it's a slightly lower footprint than if we had to bring gravel in from a long way away. Yeah. And also they have an option to do a top layer of crushed asphalt. So it's a recycled asphalt, which that feels good to recycle. And yep. it turns out it's actually pretty good. Uh, top surface for a driveway. And getting just at least the driveway path and, and the, the base layer in is a real priority for us because that not only means that we can then start to install the utilities, so electric and fiber, bringing those up from the road, but also means we can actually get larger vehicles uh, up onto the property. So things like a well drilling truck or the, the delivery truck for the septic tank with a crane or even a concrete truck. Yep. At the moment, none of those vehicles would be able to get towards the top of the property. And so having that, even just that kind of the base layer of the road in is a big milestone for us. Yeah. So then the next person we met uh, was a representative from electric company that kind of oversees uh, adding in new services, uh, new service lines. Uh, and that was very helpful. Um, so basically, you know, she saw the land, she saw where roughly the house site will be. And uh, we have options of whether to do kind of over the air like aerial lines aerial lines or underground lines obviously there is cost difference in those and she obviously suggested that uh, she'll come back again after um, the kind of base of the driveway is put in and then we can first see how uh, over line over the air line would go but also then we'll know better um, what the kind of the underground surface looks like, how much ledge do we hit yeah. it at any point, so that we can then estimate how much it will cost uh, to dig a trench. And that's just, I guess, a decision we're trying to postpone as long as possible um, so that we can get as much certainty on what to expect. So yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's going 
according to plan. And then the, the fourth and uh, final person or, or group of people that we met this week uh, were actually the forestry consultants, two people from a, uh, a local forestry consultancy company. And uh, that was a really, really cool meeting. We spent three hours, I think, with them uh, yeah. walking the land and a lot of cool stuff. Uh, but you'll have to wait for the next video to find out more about what we learned from them. Yeah, but the the, the reason was that um, the land is enrolled in current use. And when you, at least in Vermont, when you sell land that is enrolled in current use, you need to uh, uh, kind of transfer it to the new uh, owner. So that's what we're going to need to do. And um, we need well, the whole parcel is enrolled in current use. So we'll need to take some out for the house site. But first we need to know where to put the house so that we know we can draw a precise map of which area to take out. So that's why we need a forest, uh, forestry consultant. So what are we up to today? So today, um, so for the trails, we uh, decided we have um, enough trails to start with on the property for now. So we'll first focus on kind of um, maintaining and uh, kind of clearing the existing trails. Um, but the only new trail that we're going to make right now is to get to the pond. Um, so today uh, we will uh, mark and find the kind of the best path from the logging trail to the pond. Yeah, so we, we've been out to the pond a few times and it's a little tricky to get to. Uh, we end up climbing through a load of undergrowth and climbing over some fallen trees and I swear we take a different path, path to the every pond time. <laughs> every time we go out there with someone. Last week we found kind of like a reasonably clear little trail through that's a nice direct route uh, so the goal today is to try and flag that route so we can find it again and hopefully don't have to keep finding new trails every time for marking kind of our wanderings to the pond uh, we'll use these uh, flags for now uh, just so that we know where we went and and, it, and it's easy to move them from one spot to a different spot so that's what we're going to start with we've got them in a couple of different colors uh, we've checked with all the people coming out to our land so they know what colors we're using, and we are, orange is our color today. Yep. So we have this creek coming from the pond, and uh, I just need to find the best place to cross it. So here we have the pond, and we have kind of marked out the trail. And now let me show you what it looks like before we clean it up a little bit. At this point, the goal is just to be able to walk to the pond without going through the jungle. Here we're crossing the creek. And then here there's a fallen tree. So we'll cut that with a chainsaw. For now I'll have to go around, but the trail will continue that way. Okay, I'm back around the other side um, of that fallen tree. And now it's gonna continue. And here we are, back to the trail. So in the last video, we shared that we have been draining the oil out of the chainsaw and the pole saw after each day of use. Uh, and we had quite a few questions and comments asking us why we do it. It's not necessary, probably. Um, so these are electric, this oil is not like mixed in with any fuel or anything. It's purely for the automatic bar oiler that kind of oils the and lubricates the chain. The reason we drain it out is particularly for the chainsaw. I read a lot of reviews saying that this particular model likes to leak that oil when you've just left it to one side, so when it's in storage. If you're just storing this on a shelf in your garage, then yeah, just put a rag underneath, catch anything that drips off, no problem. We're storing ours in the truck bed. It's going to get kind of knocks around a little bit um, and really I just don't want the oil just leaking out all over my truck bed so for the few seconds it takes us each day just to empty that oil off it seemed prudent to me. Someone did say well why don't you test it see if with this one uh, it really does leak out so that's what we'll do today we won't drain it at the end of today we'll just see if it leaks and if not we can save ourselves 30 seconds at the end of each day draining this oil out. Obviously if we know we're not going to be using it for a longer time for a few weeks or something we'll probably still drain it out um, anyway. Okay, so for today we're going to be using the chainsaw just to clear a few of the honestly pretty small trees. There is one larger fallen tree, but it's, it's on the ground, so shouldn't be too high risk. In general, um, we are trying to be as safe as possible with a chainsaw. 
but we're not experts. We, we don't know how to use chainsaws well and safely. So next week I'm enrolled on a two day course to uh, learn a load of the basics of how to use a chainsaw safely. It is a, uh, an internationally accredited course uh, called the Game of Logging. And it's all about how to uh, be safe while using a chainsaw in situations like this. So for now, we're gonna be taking it really carefully, uh, but fingers crossed that that course will give me just a little bit more information on how to stay safe. And so if you are trying to do something like this yourself, don't copy my technique, go find a professional course like the game of logging to learn how to do it yourself safely. And in the meantime, I'll be going with these. Now that I know the name of these, these are loppers. Ear protection, visor, safety goggles. Gloves. Gloves. And chaps. chaps. You're good to go. So this tree here, uh, this fell down uh, from this big stump to my, my left here. It's still probably 10 feet tall, nine feet tall. Um, and has left this uh, long trunk running all the way up there uh, to, to kind of towards the pond and it's blocking the trail. So uh, I've removed a few of the branches up there, but even though it's dead and it's fallen, I just cut the end off and the wood inside is looking fantastic. So this might be a log that we want to keep either for firewood or potentially even for milling. Um, I'll have to measure it and see what the, the diameter is, but let's have a look. So that's about a 12 inch, 12 inch diameter log there. I, I'm not good with my trees yet. Um, I'm thinking though, just looking at the bark, this might be, it might be cherry. Without any leaves on it, it's hard to, haven't got much to go on. So that's a perfectly straight 12 foot log to there. So I'm actually gonna cut this to 12 foot six. And that way, if we do get it milled, we can still get a 12 foot board out of it, even if we have to cut a few inches off either end. So these are just the first baby steps in developing our property, but we have to start somewhere. Thanks for watching, and if you haven't already subscribed, please do so. And see you in the next video, in which we will tell you everything we learned about this forest from our forestry consultant.